Welcome back everyone to Talking Devils with Phil Marsh and Keen Franey, brought to you by talkofthedevils.co.uk. I'm here to talk all things Manchester United, we're here to talk Manchester United versus Wolves on the weekend. But as you can see by the banner below, he's come home today. Cristiano Ronaldo has come back home to Manchester United, to Old Trafford. So obviously we look, we will be discussing a lot about Cristiano um, on this show here today. And as always again, here joined by former Manchester United player Phil Marsh. Phil, we've been chatting last like last couple of days about Cristiano moving. Obviously, I was worried sick that he was going to go to the other side of Manchester. Um, how are you feeling? Mate, unbelievable. I mean, obviously, the last couple of days with the speculation about him going to Man City. Um, obviously, you know, absolutely made up that he's, he's done a U-turn and, and joined and come back home, I think. Obviously, if he had gone to Man City, it's one of them... Uh, I couldn't understand why Manchester United weren't in the the sort of running to to sign him back if you know he was available. But you know the main thing now is that he's he's come back and and for me it's an absolutely amazing signing. It'll give all the players a lift. I think it'll give the fans an, an unbelievable lift. And you know to have someone of his calibre coming into the club, everyone you know must be absolutely buzzing and just so excited to, to sort of see him back at Old Trafford and you know for, for such a influential player um for for someone who's been there done it wore the t-shirt and you know to come back to Old Trafford and hopefully you know he'll finish his career um with us now um and, and have some good couple of seasons and do the business I think it's you know perfect and this moment in time with the amount of young players that we've got to see someone like him and, and learn from the best in terms of not just on the field, off the field, the way he looks after himself, his dedication to the game, his work ethic is second to none. And I just, you know, couldn't be more excited to, to see someone like that coming back to Old Trafford and, and doing his stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. 100%. And, like, people can talk about age and stuff like that and they can kind of try disregard the move in that way, but you can't. Like, it's a world-class striker coming in to Manchester United, a legend of the football club. And I think it like the younger players are going to benefit from being around a player like that. You know, I think when you look at Cristiano Ronaldo, he's going to bring experience. He's going to bring the winner mentality. He's going to bring all these different things into, into Manchester United's dressing room. One thing we everyone has talked about down the years, especially with, Chris, with, with this dressing room, especially, is we need winners. We need experience. You have that now. Like, you brought in Rafael Varane. You've Bruno Fernandez there. You've Paul Pogba there. Jaden Sancho, young, promising player we brought in this summer, and then you've players like Harry Maguire who are all developing into leadership roles. And now you're bringing in a player like Ronaldo, who is really going to give us a lift and a fantastic striker and someone who's still producing the numbers at such to, uh, towards the twilight of his career, which is absolutely you know astounding. It's going to come to a couple of comments. Um, here before we really dive into the chat, Andrew Digman is in the house. Andrew says he's buzzing and um, with the signing of Ronaldo. And um, Wayne is also here on our Facebook page as well. And um, Wayne says, What a buzz, lads! Absolutely. Look, I think I've gone through a whole whirlwind of emotions today, and tear there was tears in my eyes and everything. And I kind of finally recognized my favorite player growing up is coming home, like coming back home to Old Trafford. And I can't imagine what that roar is going to be like at, at Newcastle. With the international break, we all, we thought Rafael Varane got a reception. This one's going to be off the scale, one hundred percent. Amy's also in the comments says she can't believe it as well. Yeah, look, I I was convinced he was going to City, but looks like there was um, a turnaround with that. Yeah, so I mean, as you said, someone of his calibre, you know, to come into the club again, and it'll just give everyone such a massive lift. The the place will be absolutely rocking and. Um, He's somebody who, as I've just mentioned there, about his work ethic, his dedication, he's a serial winner. I think the younger players are only going to pick up and learn from him. And what a, what a role model to have. Um, there's, there's not many better, I don't think, in, in you know world football at the moment who you could maybe say, you know, looking up to someone who's got the complete package. You know, he, he doesn't do anything wrong. He's not really in the media ever doing anything he shouldn't be doing. He looks after himself. He's an athlete. And as you say, he is 36, yeah, he is getting on. But for me, you know, he, he's still producing and he's probably still in the top, you know, 
five players in in world football in terms of you know consistently performing his numbers and you know we're, we're lucky to have him and, and i'm sure you know he can't wait to to come back and hear the old trafford um singing his name definitely 100 percent like that reception he's going to get is it's just going to be absolutely off the scale and it's, it's going to be unbelievable i can't wait to get back over in a few weeks time I really, really can't to get back over to Old Trafford and, and see him. I didn't, never thought I'd get the chance to see him play in the United shirt again, not unless it was a testimonial or a charity game or something like that. But it is what it is. We, we're going to see him come home. Phil, we in the times we've actually chatted on the on this podcast, we've chatted a lot about your time at United. Specifically, I really want to dive in about be, your time being at United, but being around Cristiano Ronaldo, because you, when he came into the football club, you're obviously still at a time where you're in the academy and, and stuff like that. What was it like when you were around Cristiano, kind of at the young stage as Cristiano, in the early stage kind of of his development at, at the football club? Like when he came in for, as a young boy from Portugal at the kind of tender age of 18. Yeah, it, it was, I remember it. I mean, I, I can remember it like it was yesterday. He, he, I remember him coming in. He was a young kid. He was shy. He didn't really speak any English at all. And um, he gravitated really to, to, to us lads because we were teenagers. I mean, he was only a young kid and we was the same age as Cristiano. Um, and he, he used to come in the gym. He'd, he'd ask us to play two touch and table tennis and basketball just to sort of, you know, sort of make a few friends and stuff because a lot of the lads in the first team although you know took to him and, and you know wanted to help him and stuff i think he felt a little bit you know as an outsider when he first joined so so we sort of um you know enjoyed spending time with him as you would do um and got to know him a little bit better on a personal level um and, and just sort of seen straight away from you know the get-go he, he had unbelievable talent he always wanted to be doing something something with the ball whether it be free kicks you know feet quick feet training skills and and you know he, he was a he was an absolute joy to be around to be honest that I, I remember we, we used a little story we we used to play uh, after training we'd, we'd go into the gym and sometimes you'd maybe have to go and do some weights and stuff but obviously I had a bit of downtime and we used to i used to play table tennis quite a lot with him i, I I fancied myself as a decent table tennis player so I used to challenge a few of the first team players like Rio and a few of the others and um, this one particular day I'd been playing and I, I, no one could get me off I, I was just having a good day on the table tennis and it was winner stays on and Cristiano come in out of, out of training and, and was laughing and saying oh I'll take you off like laughing and joking and I beat him and, and he, he didn't really take it very well he, he's obviously you know loves winning hates losing and that's why he is at the top because his mentality is you know he's no one um beats him he wants to be the best at everything and i sort of had a little laugh and a joke with him and, and he sort of took it all right but i could tell he was a bit annoyed because i'd beat him and um anyway a few this was a few days later he, he came in and, and he come and like come over to me and was like oh after training we'll play table tennis and i said yeah yeah I said, no worries so went out training done my usual stuff went up and had a bite to eat and then he came and found me and was like oh table, did you want a game of table tennis so yeah 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 so we went down into the gym and um i could see like he had sort of that fire in his eyes as though <laughs> yeah, you're getting it now because so anyway we played and he honestly he absolutely from from playing him about three or four days previously he absolutely like must he must have honestly gone on bought a table tennis table and like been playing non-stop for like three days because he wanted to beat me and he just was like I'm not having that flipping reserve team kid taking the mick out of me and he must have like been practicing practicing and honestly he was unbelievable and he beat me and then he just sort of like smiled and was like oh good game and I thought yeah that and and that just shows obviously the mentality of someone like that because it's not just football it's everything he wants to be the best at everything and that's the elite mentality what you know you need to have to to reach you know the heights that he has and and it's obviously you know for me looking back on memories like that and obviously being part of his journey when he first came in at united it's you know you know amazing for me because i i could see that, that you know he was somebody who i thought he's got raw talent yeah he, you know he might not be you know the complete package at the moment but if he keeps improving keeps working and he's got that drive and passion 
Um, and obviously he's gone on to, to to show how much of a you know good player he, he, he is, and and not just that he's a he's a great person as well. Yeah, and do you know what? It's mad, like the table tennis story, like the fact that he went home and practiced for a few days. I can imagine why he done is when he bought the table, he definitely folded it in half and does those four hundred. Yeah, like Forrest Gump, he'll have been like Forrest Gump, just practicing yeah. nonstop. And, definitely, and, I, I I play it myself. I used to play it a lot myself competitively. And I know what you mean when if someone beats you, especially in that sport, take a dint in confidence. And yeah. you, I remember practicing with yeah. the hand that yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and we, used to, we used to do that a lot, though. Not not just, I mean, loads of different things. We'd play basketball, table tennis, two touch with, with the football. And it a lot of, I mean, not just Cristiano, like a lot of the first team players was, you know, serial winners. And, and if you beat them, mm. it was like, They'd hold that gr- grudge against you for a little bit, and they'd want to sort of get you like their, their own back on you. And I think that's what you. The, it was it was in a good way. Um, the the competition didn't just sort of be all football. It was in other other things as well. And I think that's good because that brought out sort of the the competitive nature that you need to to strive and, and become better. Uh, obviously, you're never going to win every game, and you're never going to be the best at everything all the time. So when you do lose and you and you sort of feel that fire that you, you don't want that feeling again that then you know brings it out on the football field and it's the same same sort of scenario but obviously you know on a different different scale playing in the first team at man united you know at that moment in time he was winning more games than than he wasn't so that becomes a habit and, it, and it's a good habit to to get into winning football matches being successful going into a game feeling like you're invincible and you, you can't lose you know sometimes you are going to lose but that's where the best teams that have, have been the most successful that that's where you, you, you you've got to get to and, and feel as though you're on that roll and you know games can't come quick enough because you just want to keep ticking them off when yeah and and that's that's what it felt like when I was there at the club and, and the whole atmosphere around Carrington and you know at the training ground all the time was yeah don't want to lose you've got to win that's Manchester United second isn't good enough you're out there to win win trophies and you know it, it was just fantastic and, and he was sort of you know Cristiano was the the sort of perfect sort of role model for that um sort of situation and like do you know when he was obviously at, at a time where he was going through development at that time he was kind of you, you talked about the gym kind of in his first couple of years he was a great player. Like he was, he was able to beat a man. He was very skillful, and he was working on his kind of end product at that time. But his physical evolution at Manchester United is something that I think is remarkable. He came like skin and bone, re really, like Joe, you know, fragile looking almost. But the physical evolution of him in terms of his upper body strength, his the physical core, he came. He ultimately became like the perfect human specimen. At Man United, and that that's all down to his hard work and determination and his drive. And you've hit the nail on the head. Like we've, we've seen that evolution, and you were there for that. Like was he probably like one of the first people to come into the training ground and last to leave? Was he yeah, kind of like one yeah, of yeah. type of Hundred percent. He, he he was the, the first guy in there, and as I say, he was always practicing. Whether it be you know free kicks, penalties, crossing, you know, quick feet, skill in the gym, you know boxing he used to do it all sorts of stuff and he and he was you know somebody who as a young kid and, and you you know you're looking he's some he was similar age he was he was the same age as me and i was thinking like if he's doing that now you know like that's the the benchmark for the likes of myself and other lads who are trying to get into the first team he's showing the way for for everybody else and his physical development yet he used to be in the gym a lot. He used to ask Mike Clegg, who was the sort of gym and strength and conditioning um, sort of coach at the time at Carrington for programs. He used to do a lot of boxing with him, and um, it, it was just you know he, he wanted to make himself the best he could be, and that's inevitably what you've got to do if you want to reach the levels that he's done. And as I say. He did come and he wasn't sort of, you know, as, as strong and as quick and all that stuff because of his hard work and the, the sort of consistent amount of training and work that he put in, you know, it, it, 
came on leaps and bounds. And when he left United, I think he was, if you wanted to create a DNA of a, a perfect footballer, Cristiano Ronaldo probably would be the, the sort of, you know, physique, you know, height, speed. He's got everything. I think he, he's the perfect sort of, you know, model for, for what a fo- perfect footballer would look like. Do you know what I mean? So that's down to him and, and his work ethic. So, yeah, fair play to him. And he, he's obviously, you know, reaped the rewards from that in terms of what he's done in his career. Yeah, and like he came to United as a boy, and he literally left a man. Like that's that's literally when you, when you talk about his first spell at the football club. Yeah, he won a three peat. Like he won the Premier League title three times in a row. Won the Champions League, won the FA Cup, the League Cup, on a couple on a few occasions. Club World Cup. He won nearly every trophy that that is there to offer. Now, obviously, he didn't win Europa League slash the UEFA Cup because. Mm-hmm. We're in the Champions League. We're, we're at the pinnacle at that point. But if you look at everything there is to win, he done it, and he's coming now for a second second tenure at the football club to do it all again. And you, you can talk about this project that Manchester United are building now. People are saying this transfer is outside of what we usually do. Yes, probably under the current thing under Solskjaer. If you look at the profile of player you sign, we're signing. We haven't signed anyone of that kind of age bracket, bar the exception of Cavani. But you make these exceptions for world class players. Like you make these exceptions. Cristiano is that is that is that exception, one hundred percent. And you look at what this, the permutations of this transfer now. Like you look at how is he going to help the development of Mason Greenwood? I think you look at you look at Mason Greenwood and you're like, he can learn from Ronaldo. How he carries himself, how he trains, how he do builds himself up in the gym, do all them things, nutrition, all these different type of things. Mason can be that sponge to kind of learn off Ronaldo, and every detail, movement, finishing, everything. Mason Greenwood, I think, can massively, like for the two years Ronaldo is going to get this football club. I think Mason Greenwood, in terms of development, we talked about learning off Cavani. Mm. With all due respect, this is Cristiano Ronaldo. This is one yeah, of the best, if not the best of all time. Yeah, there's, there's nobody better in, in world football to, to learn off. I think, you know, when he was at the club at the time, it, I think it, it was a great time for him to, to learn and be around some of the players that he was, the likes of Roy Keane. And because he was a young kid and he did make mistakes and he probably did try and, you know, overplay a little bit at times and do too much. And, you know, once penny dropped with him and, and he you know found out you know yeah less is more at times and you know don't always have to beat three and four men to you know get a shot off or whatever what a player he was and, and you know all them players around him you know helped him through that period and I think he's at that stage in his career now where he's been there he's done it he's played at every level he can do he, he's been you know an absolute megastar across the world He's in that position now where, as you said, the likes of Mason Greenwood, the likes of Rashford, Sancho, all these other lads who are, you know, in a good part of the careers now where, you know, they should be hitting the prime and they can maybe kick on and, and you know, take their game to the next level. There's nobody better than, you know, picking Cristiano's brains and, and, you know, asking him for advice, you know, seeing what he does on the training ground, obviously watching how he, you know, uh, has himself off the field and, He's, a, he's an absolute perfect role model for, for some of these kids now that are going to be at the club. And, you know, if you can't learn off him, then, you know, you, there's nobody else who, who I don't think would, you know, be better. We did mention Cavani and obviously he is a great player and his movements and all that. But as you just said, then this is Ronaldo, probably one of the best, if not the best player that you know, the world football's ever seen. And, you know, it's just going to give everyone such a, a massive buzz and lift. And I think, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to envisage myself like being at the club at now and watching such an amazing player come back to the club. It must be such a exciting time for everyone involved. Um, yeah, just looking forward to obviously seeing him as well when he gets back. And it's going to be a fantastic, um, you know, ride, whatever happens. Definitely. Like, regardless of what happens, that this move is going to be one of these things where it's, it's going to be like romance is a word you can use. That's like, 
let's get it straight. It's, it's probably one of them type of moves, but it's going to be beneficial for the for the for the players there, the young players too, Lauren, especially the forward players. And it's going to give the dressing room a lift. I don't care what anybody says. When a world class player wa- walks into a dressing room, it gives everyone a lift, gets everyone up another gear. And like, it first start with Sancho, that gave the dressing room a lift. If Rafael Ran walking in and a serial winner of a defender. To definitely lift the likes of Maguire, Luke Shaw, Juan Bissaka, and now you've Cristiano Ronaldo. Like Bruno Fernandez must look, he he must be lighting up right now, thinking, look at this striker I have a chance. Like any, any ball I get in, Tim, nine times out of ten he's probably going to score. Do you know? Premier League defenses are probably absolutely though bricking it now, considering the firepower we have. Now people might talk about we might be short in midfield. But when you have that much firepower and you have a solid defensive line, and now I have two very good goalkeepers back there as well, Manchester United have a very, very good team. Very, very good team. Demands are going to be that a title challenge will have to be there now because we've a world-class number nine. Like Gary Neville was saying previously that if we bought Harry Kane that uh, do a title challenge is on the cards as well. Look, yeah. we've Cristiano Ronaldo now. The, the 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 expectation has to be there. The expectation is there for me, and look, I think he's going to elevate us, and we are going to push this season, one hundred percent. I think rec- recruitment's a massive part of it, and obviously now with the signings you mentioned, like Varane, Sancho, and now Ronaldo, the expectation that the the level's just been notched up again. Now we, we've we've sort of signed, you know, somebody who should guarantee you, you know, twenty five, thirty goals a season. And, you know, if you're doing that and, and obviously we've got these other players now, hopefully that can, you know, improve us in the areas that we were looking for. Obviously, we have got the central midfield sort of issue that, that's still not 100% maybe, um, you know, Ali's probably not 100% happy with that in terms of Fred, Matic, McTominay. But, you know, other than that, that that first choice 11 now is you know going to be some team and... and You've got to sort of, you know, set the the ambition of, of, of this year of winning a trophy, whether it's the, you know, Premier League, whether it's the FA Cup. And for me now, with somebody who's got the experience that Ronaldo has in terms of, you know, you're winning European Cups and Champions League, then there's no reason why we can't have a good uh, deep run in, in the Champions League as well. We've got a decent group. So that, that shouldn't be a problem getting out of the group. And then obviously, you know, you are just hoping you get a decent draw to, to get you to the, you know, quarter semis. And then, you know, if you get there, we've got people now who's won the trophies like Varane, Ronaldo, players who've played in these big games, serial winners who can get the job done. And hopefully they can bring that to, to Manchester United this season. Definitely. And uh, what I'll just say about the rest of this window, I don't think we're done yet either. Considering when you look at Diogo Delo could be going on loan. I think here in Trippier probably is, 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 is very likely because they were saying that, you know, that's probably something that's going to be towards the end of the window. We could see movement on that. I think you may see, you know, and maybe a midfielder coming in. I think there is room for that because there is outgoings happening as well. So I think it, it, it is a very exciting time. And if, if we do manage to do more business for the end of the window, it'd probably be our best ever window in the last, let's say, but it's definitely our best window this season post Ferguson, one hundred percent. Post Ferguson, this is definitely our best window by yeah. far. But this window has just gone on to a whole new level. And if you do get a midfielder and you do get that, let's say another right back or whoever, whoever in this squad, we, we talked, we, we talked about, let's say the last two three years, we've had a very good eleven and let's say thirteen fourteen. Now we've proper strength and depth. Mm. especially in the forward areas we can definitely sustain a challenge on all fronts now where rotation can definitely be utilized and we can definitely do you know, push forward to, to do it in, in every competition and you're absolutely right you bring in Ronaldo and Varane and Sancho and especially with the group we got no disrespect to them teams you'd, be, you'd expect that we do make a push in Europe this season especially having the quality that we have yeah, well, definitely that's got to be the targets. I think, you know, that we, we've, we've, the amount of signings we've made now, and, and, you know, we're not talking about, you know, players that are just coming in to make up the numbers or bolster the squad. These are world class, you know, the best probably available in the positions. 
at this moment in time. So the ambition has gone sort of from, you know, yeah, steady progress to now. Hang on a minute. This is, you know, potentially the, the best squad of players and, and group that we've had for, you know, a long, long time. And, you know, with the amount of quality that they have, the, the expectation has to be there. And, and Manchester United is a club that expects you to win trophies, no matter, you know, what year it is, what players you've got. The, the start of the season, your expectation is to win whatever trophy um, you can in terms of, you know, Premier League, FA Cup, Carabao Cup, Champions League. If you're in them, you've got to be challenging. You've got to be winning them. That's the expectation, and and that'll never change. But realistically, now with the signings that we have made, I think you know there's no reason why we 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 can't do that. And as you say, we have got the squad to rotate, and th there is a strength in depth. So you know there's no reason why players can't you know be utilised in in different periods against different teams and give the rest to still, you know, some of the lads who may need it at times and you, you still can't pick up results. For me, there's there's no reason why we, we can't do that now with this group. Definitely. And utilisation of these forward, play, like the, the forward areas, the rotation, I think it's going to be very good. And I think there's a, a room for a lot of these players to develop. Dave Murphy, also in the comments, even to, your, even to you, Dave, um, says Martial to lose his place and down to third in the pecking order behind Ronaldo and Cavani. Yeah, look, I think th that that could happen. But again, it's strength and depth. Like, you never know what can happen. Injuries, suspensions. You're going to need players in every position. Like, when we won the treble in 99, we had four great strikers. We had Ollie, Teddy, and you had Cole and York. All used for different games, different setups, different against different teams, different situations. Martial can definitely still be utilised this season. Like, when you look at the striking options, you do have... In, in, let's say if you're just looking at number nine right now, you've Ronaldo, you've Cavani, you've Greenwood, Martial. There's your four. Like you have four strikers right there. Left, left, left channel. You have Rashford. We can be utilised there. Jaden Sancho can be utilised there. We Daniel James still at the football club. To the right side, you have Ama Diallo still there. Mason Greenwood can play on the right. Sancho can play on the right. We've so many options, and the beauty of it is, is that. Solskjaer in the last kind of two years has really kind of had to rely on a certain core of players because he he probably didn't have the strength and depth that he has now. But now he has the options to really to look after, really kind of look after these players. And when we're like, especially if you look at October, for example, where we've a really tough run of fixtures, Solskjaer has the luxury now of saying like, look, we're playing Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge. Like this is the type of setup we can go. You can then say to, let's say, a, a Martial or a Greenwood, right, you're not playing this week. Next week, there's your game. They set up this certain way. You can play there. Kind of similar to what Sir Alex did, you know, in, in that regard, where you can pick certain players, certain games, you're not playing the same way. Um, do you know, you, you have you have them options to keep teams guessing that on match day, they're, they're not expecting so that, like, the quote-unquote status quo. You, do you know what I mean? We do really, we do really have the luxury you now of really being able to push forward. And I'll just reiterate: if we get that central midfield player in, my God, we could really push on every front. Yeah, the, the, I think the centre midfield thing. If, if obviously that you know can get addressed, and you know that that's another position that you know some people maybe think we're still not. 100% sort of happy with which I, I get and I understand um, then you know in terms of you know best 11s I think you can't really look much further than you know what United have done this transfer market and it's as, it's as good, as good as any United team I've seen in a long long time and as I say that's you know the, the expectation's got to be there this this year with, with the amount of quality we've brought in but again it gives Ollie a good headache he's going to obviously have you know, a lot of players to choose from, a lot of positions. Uh, as you say, attacking options, there's going to be, you know, a lot of players who's going to want to play. They're not always going to play and they're going to maybe have to wait for the opportunity or if they do get a chance, then, you know, that that's good. I think, you know, healthy competition is what you need at, at the top clubs. You know, players shouldn't be sort of guaranteed to start every single game when you've got, you know, a great squad of players. If, if you 
get your opportunity and you you put a shift in and you perform and you do the business, then that gives Ollie a, a headache to say, well, Ollie, he deserves to start the next game. If you don't perform and, and you know, you, your levels aren't up to what they should be, then, you know, the, the, you can't have any sort of gripes when you're not playing the next game. And that that's what all the best squads who's, who's ever been successful do. There's, there's always players who are, you know, chomping at the bit to take your place and be, be in your position. And if you drop your levels and you don't perform to, to the levels you need to be at, then, you know, you, you can't really complain then when, when they do take over and, and you're sort of on the bench or whatever. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing the um, sort of how that pans out with, with all these players that we've got at our disposal and how, you know, Ollie goes about fitting them in and keeping everyone happy. Um, don't envy him yeah, a Definitely, 100%. And then you have players like Van der Beek who, who have a role to play. McTominay, when he comes back from injury, he's definitely going to be look raring to go. And then you have players like Pogba. Like, I think people are maybe forgetting about Paul Pogba since his transfer has been started. If you talk, people talk about Pogba wanting the club to be ambitious, well, look, you have, you, have, you have Sancho, Varane, Ronaldo coming in, you have Bruno there. If that's not ambition, I don't know what is. Don't be shocked if we see him signing that dotted line. Just yet, maybe after the deadline, I think we may see that movement on that. Don't quote me, but I, 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 I have a feeling, I have a nudge that if like, you look at that ambition, Paul Pogba, that's enough ambition for anybody. I don't care who you are, he has to sign that dotted line. If that's a world class team, you have now. Well, there, well, there's no excuse now. Yeah, you the know? club can't do any more than what they've done in this transfer window in terms of bringing quality in and showing ambition and obviously where they want to be. So, again, that just comes down to, to the player. And, you know, I think, you know, going back a few years, you could maybe understand a little bit in terms of the lack of quality a little bit in, in and around him. And, you know, we've not really had the, the players where you're getting, you know, on the edge of the seat and you're thinking, oh, these players can really do something. Whereas now, you know, with the certainly this transfer window and, and you know, the, the sort of steady progress we have made last year and, you know, whatever, I think, fans can start to get a little bit more excited and, and, and think, yeah, this this United team could could be the one that, you know, brings a title back and could be the one that, you know, starts the momentum again of winning trophies and being back at the top consistently and being a challenge in Europe and, you know, that that's where inevitably where where we want to be and this this transfer window's shown shown the sort of direction of where where we're heading and where we want to be. Yeah, definitely. And I think there's a massive push coming this season. Redo, I really am positive about it. And hopefully, hopefully I'm right. Hopefully I'm right 100%. I'm, at the end of the season, we're on this podcast. I'm talking about what trophies we've won and how we've developed 100%. Just going to come to another couple of comments here. Um, Talk of Devils is here as well. Our YouTube channel, obviously. Um, question here says, Ronaldo's on 118 goals. The current record held by Wayne Rooney. Held at 253. Is he cape lover or are we asking too much? Right. If you're talking two years and he's on 118 goals, you, you... yeah, no, I don't, he's not doing yeah. that. No way. But I think what he will do, and, and depending on obviously how many games he does play, I mean, I think you want him playing in, in the biggest games because he's been there and done it. And I think that's where he thrives in terms of. You know, he performs on the big stage. I think he will definitely get you, you know, 20, 25 goals minimum in all competitions. In the league. And I, and I think, yeah, in the league, I think he'll get you at least 20. I mean, depending on, you know, if he starts all the time, I mean, that'll be sort of, we'll, we'll have to see how that pans out. But I think if he's going to be playing regular and he's going to be playing every week, then he's going to score at least 20 goals in the Prem on its own. That's that's probably a given, I think, with you know the way we've got um, sort of that much quality now in terms of you know in the midfield and out wide, he's going to be getting yeah. service and, and he's a, he's shown he can score goals at any level anywhere he's been. Um, but yeah, I, I think obviously two hundred and fifty-three. Dep- I mean, depending on you know you know he's you done know. he's done everything. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't actually surprise me if if. He, he got close to it um, because he, he's he's that's what he's done all his career. He's, he's silenced the haters. He's 
proved people wrong. He's, he's done things when people said he can't. And that's what drives him. That's that's the way he is. People will say, oh, this, that, and the other, and, and he'll, he won't make a big fuss of it. But in the back of his head, he'll say, oh, I'll, I'll prove them wrong. I'll do that. No problem. And, you know, again, it, it wouldn't surprise me if he got somewhere close to it. Yeah, I think it. I think it's very feasible in two seasons that he hits two hundred. I think. I think yeah. that's that. I think that's feasible, one hundred percent. And look, look, if he doesn't break it, but he helps. You know, do you know if he helps the team win a couple of trophies and he doesn't break the record, so be it. Because at the end of the day, I know he he's probably driven to win the Ballon d'Or. He's driven to win these individual accolades. But if he helps us win trophies, that's the main thing that matters at the end of the day. Because that's yeah what we thrive as Manchester United fans. That last thing at the end of the day. And it's a comment here that says, love it. Phil starts off apprehensive, but at the end he's like, yeah, you know what? He might just do it. I mean, I think it's just because obviously, you know, he's such a sort of, he just loves, pre- I mean, the thing that sticks out for me is when um, Atletico Madrid in, in the Champions League, when they were all laughing at him and saying about, Oh yeah, because he was um, two 0 up in how many Champions Leagues, and Ronaldo sort of was just sort of saying it's, the tie's not over, and then he, he scored a hat trick in the return leg, and you know that that's what he does. He, he silenced them all, and and that was you know him to a T. He he doesn't sort of you know make a big deal about anything. He'll just go about his business, and and when it comes to the crunch, you know nine times out of ten he he comes out on top. And that's the last laugh. Yeah, 100%. And one thing as well, like his... I think when you have all these different creative players, they're they're going to be able to utilise his strengths. And he just knows where to be in terms of these goal-scoring positions. The fact that we've we've players now who can, can deliver a great cross. Like Bruno Fernandes, is, like, delivery is unbelievable. When you have Luke Shaw. Like Luke, I think Luke Shaw is going to absolutely love playing with Ronaldo. Because the, the amount of times Luke Shaw has them drag backs into the box or his corner delivery from the corner is, is, is very good as well. Yeah. Like, do you know, and then you have Pogba. Like, look at the form he's on in terms of his assists this season. He has five assists already. Like, Ronaldo's going to love coming into this team. Like, I know that there's no disrespect to Juventus because they're a very good team. But you look at the attacking options we have. He, he Ronaldo definitely looked at that and said, I can score a lot of goals this football club. 100% and look the proofs in the pudding he's here he's, he's he, the contract signed he, he's with us the club announced it now obviously there's fees issues stuff like that but look they'll always iron themselves out but he's here and he's ours that, that, that's, I, I literally tweeted that before we went live I was like he's here and he's ours and he's back and he, he's home and as, as the banner below us says Ronaldo's come home to Old Trafford and who would have thought I thought it's, it's speculation every year. Every summer since he left is Ronaldo's coming home. Now he now he is home. And look, hopefully now you can kind of propel us to that next level and we can win all the big trophies that we can. I know it'd be great to talk about Ronaldo for the whole show, but I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about our upcoming game this weekend because it looks like now, Phil, that two new signings that we did have this summer are in line for their first starts. For Manchester United and Jaden Sancho and Rafael Varane. Kind of looking at the Wolves game because going to Molyneux has always seemed to be, in, especially since they've got promoted and since they've been back in the Premier League, Molyneux has always been kind of a tough destination for us to go. Now, this out there, obviously, Wolves are under a new manager, new style of play, but we've also brought in a lot of good players, like the Sancho's, the Varane's. Obviously, Bruno has come in as well. He's he's a very integral part of this team. How are you feeling kind of coming into this um, Wolves game on the weekend, the fact that the two lads, Sancho and Varane, are going to get their first start? And also, we're on the back of a a draw last weekend with Southampton away. Yeah, I think I'm I'm very optimistic. I think, obviously, the the game against Southampton didn't probably pan out um, as, as Ollie probably predicted, I think. Maybe the team selection could have been a little bit different in terms of I we, we spoke about obviously the week prior to that about Van der Beek possibly starting in that um, you know in that central role and dominating possession and I think you know that could be something that maybe would have changed the outcome of that game but 
No, I think obviously you know you, you're going to get them games. This, the, I mean, the, the idea of Manchester United being able to go away and steamroll every single team it is is not going to happen. But um, yeah, with with the the firepower that we have got now, and and obviously the the two players you just mentioned coming in for the first starts, I think Varane will you know give everyone that lift at the back and make everyone feel a little bit more at ease, and I think that'll give the midfield a little bit more license to you know get forward and maybe give Oli a, a chance to. Instead of playing two sitters that, that he, he does like to do, he, he can maybe you know sacrifice one of them now and, and go a little bit more um, attacking. And I think, as you say, Wolves is always a difficult place to go. I think that you know they, they set up and the the good at home, they, they they like to get the ball forward. And I think obviously with them, they, they have struggled a little bit until you know Raúl Jiménez has come back recently, but he's probably not mm. going to be you know back to his best. I think they've they've, they've struggled in terms of scoring goals and. Um, you know, getting results that way because he, he was the talisman and I think, you know, when he got injured it, it the, the goals dried up and you know, they haven't really sort of found that that person who could maybe take his place and, and deliver the same kind of sort of results that he was doing. But it's always going to be a tricky game. I think that, you know, we still have to sort of go into that game with every confidence. We're still unbeaten, you know, we're only two games into the season. You know, the new players are gelling. There's obviously been, you know, more training and, you know, people are getting to know each other a little bit more. But I think, you know, once these lads get up to speed and everyone's on board and Ollie sort of identifies his, his best side and, you know, that, that starts clicking, then I think, you know, that, that we're going to be sort of a team nobody will want to be playing against because with the attacking options, as we, as we say, you know, even if a game isn't going to plan and you need to change it, Ollie's going to have options who he can bring on off the bench, can come on and make an impact. And, you know, for me, I think, you know, against Wolves, we, we've got to go in there and be, you know, expecting three points and, and, and hopefully we can keep a clean sheet. As I said, I don't think Wolves have, have sort of been, you know, scoring many goals in terms of since Raul Jimenez, has, I know he's come back now, but he's obviously not going to be for such a long time out. He's never going to be, you know, back to his best straight away. So hopefully we can, you know, take advantage of that and, you know, get a good good performance and, and pick up three points, maybe score, you know, a couple of goals and, and that'd be a good day at the office for me, I think. Yeah, definitely. And I think when you when you look at the like Wolves midfield, it's very solid like to have the likes of Neves, Joao Martino, players like that who, who do have their individual strengths. But as you said, I think Unfortunately, Scott McTominay's out this weekend. Obviously, he, he had surgery this week and he's going to be out for this game and the international break. Hopefully, he'll be back after the break, uh, after the international break. But I think this game does give Bill Oli uh, an opportunity to maybe get a van de Beek in there, maybe alongside a Fred or a Matic and take control of the game. Because when you have Rafael Varane there at the back, you have the extra protection, you have the legs beside Harry Maguire and you have Juan Bissaka, Luke Shaw, who are all very good defenders defensively. So, I think definitely this weekend could be a, a kind of good game to kind of kickstart Van de Beek and to take control of the game because he played very well in the last. I know it was the last game of the season. People can say it was like kind of a do a, a nothing game, but like I think if you if you look at you know Van de Beek's performance away to, at Molyneux last, last season, with, actually funnily enough, it was alongside the Man United in midfield. They played, they gelled really well and they controlled the midfield very well. So. That's something that could be a, a possibility this weekend. And I think when you look at it as well, Mason Greenwood up front is in very good form. He's, he's been very potent. And the fact he hasn't made the England squad this this week, he's going to have another tip on his shoulder. He's going to want to prove that I should be in that squad 100%. I'd like, for the life of me, I, I'm Irish. Right? I wouldn't have a, an overall, like let's say, like interest in England's national team. But I think it's a disgrace that Mason Greenwood is not in that squad when you consider his quality and his form and his natural finishing ability and his versatility, like he's, he's a fantastic striker. And I, for me, I'm baffled that Selke hasn't picked him, but again, I suppose as a Man United fan, selfishly, you're like, look, he's going to be fit. He's going to not pick up an injury in international break and he's going to be there to play up front. So I think that, that way you're happy, but then you have players like Pogba who were on fire. So I think going into this weekend, Yes, Wolves have their strengths, but so do we. And we're Man United at the end of the day, so we need to go out there to take the bull by the horns and really go out there and put on a very good performance and show show Cristiano Ronaldo essentially what he signed for the club. 
and you know who we are. And like I, another positive this week as well, I think Marcus Rashford came back. Like, he's not back fully trained with the team, but he's back on the pitch and doing his recovery. This 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 is very good. This is very good for us, one hundred percent. And I think these four players this weekend, I think they're all gonna really want to impress. Because after the break, Ronaldo's going to be there. Sancho's first start. He's going to want to impress. Rashford's going to be back in a couple of weeks. We now we're down with the McTominay injury, which means the midfield players who might not have started, like a Matic or a Van de Beek, who are, who are not the first team's names on the team sheet, they have a chance to, 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 to kind of prosper. And then you have Paul Pogba there, who he's on five assists already. If he gets an assist every three games, he's going to break the record. He's going to break that assist record at the end of the season. So... We've all them elements there. And then you have to consider, we win on the weekend. We break Arsenal's unbeaten record for a away record away from home. Mm. So I think there's so many different things essentially on the line, but also to really make a statement. And like this, this sign of Ronaldo, and you break that record at the same time, and all these little things, obviously Sancho and Varane starting, that, that sends a message to your rivals that, you're there to stay. And I think a win this weekend in convincing fashion too will be just that, a statement. Yeah, it's got, it's got to be everyone's, you know, sort of ambition now to, to be picking up points regular. You, as I say, you're never going to win every single game. But, you know, going into that Wolves game, as you said there, there's, there's quite a lot of things that, you know, are on the line. Pressure in terms of people want to sort of, you know, Putting a good performance to, to show Cristiano that you know this is the levels that we're going to be playing at, and you know he's actually going to come in and add that firepower and, and quality and experience. But yeah, I just think you know the the, the last week's results against Southampton. I, I think a few people got a little bit carried away, and um, people sort of you know thinking because we won against Leeds in the first game and scored five goals. Obviously, we've signed all these new players. Sometimes things don't happen overnight. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. I think all this stuff is great. But in terms of seeing instant success, it may not be, you know, every single game and every single week we see the complete performances and we're going to be scoring four and five goals and every single player is going to be, you know, eight, nine out of ten because because that just doesn't happen. And as I said, sometimes you have to give these players a little bit of time to adapt, a little bit of time to you know build up the partnerships with you know the players they're playing around get used to everyone and, and all that kind of thing and and then obviously you know five six more games into the season then you know there's no there's no really excuses then I think everyone will you know know the jobs everyone will have you know had that game time and playing time to you know really get up to speed and and then you know that's when I think we will start seeing the the best out of um the, this group of players and, and the results will hopefully then be a lot more consistent in, and, and the performances as well. Yeah, definitely. And again, when you look at the, the quality that we have, the, these results are only a matter of time to come. It's just, I suppose, the time, that, the, let's hope that the, the time to gel, it's a very quick, a quick space. But with the international break and some of these players not going on duty, it, 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 we do have that kind of the window of opportunity you know, to, to do that. If you look at this game Sunday, Phil, obviously look at the way from home. We've had a fantastic away record um, under Solskjaer, especially since January 2020. What are your thoughts on Manchester United's away form in kind of the last kind of nearly two or so years? The, the away form's been amazing. I mean, last last year to you know go such a long time with with the, the group of players that we had and, and you know be unbeaten was was immense and and. As you say, I think you know breaking Arsenal's record if we if we win um, on Sunday is a testament to how good that form has been because it's it's difficult, especially in the Premier League. Every single game is a tough game. There's no gimmies. Um, as you've seen, there's been loads and loads of upsets over the, the years in terms of you know minnows beating against the, the playing against the big clubs, but um, to show that consistency and and to be able to pick up results frequently as we have done in terms of you know that run we've been on is is amazing and hopefully we can carry that on i mean there's there's no reason why we can't i think if anything as we say with the transfer window we've had we've added more quality to the team so performances you know really should be improving you'd, you'd hope so 
yeah, just obviously want to keep that momentum going. And as I said, I think the, the, the majority of the games this year, um, I think which will decide the Premier League will be with the home form, though. If, if we can cut out the, you know, get mistakes and, and the, the games that we slipped up in last year, like the, the Sheffield United and teams like that when we, we've dropped points, I think, you know, if you can make Old Trafford a fortress um, and get it back to how it used to be when teams used to, you know, f- you know, fear coming there and you know expecting to, to, to get beaten, you know the the, the atmosphere of the crowd, um, then you know the, this year it could be the, the year that the title comes back to Old Trafford. Yeah, one hundred percent. And you get that home form; that's your bread and butter. Like the home, the win not games home, like traditionally for Man United, was just your bread and butter. And I think if we do tie that home form form down and then continue the away form that we had and keep picking up points on the road. Has all the ingredients for a title challenge, and if not, winning the league. It's just putting all them things into te- like. Mm-hmm. It's great in theory. It's absolutely great to say it has to be put into into motion, into practice now, one hundred percent. Phil, in terms of the game on Sunday, do you have a prediction and um, score prediction for the game um, on Sunday? Um, I think to be honest, I, I think we're gonna be. A, a, I mean. I'm hoping that if Oli picks the team that I want him to pick um, and, and we can put in a performance that I'm hoping the players that play, you know, and carry out what I'm, I'm envisaging, then I think we should win comfortably. I'm, I'm thinking 2 or 3 nil, um would be my prediction. I'm just, you know, not quite sure because last, last week we obviously discussed the Southampton game and mm. we mentioned obviously about Van der Beek playing in that position and then that never happened and you know, obviously they scored the, the, the goal, well, Fred on goal, whatever, but obviously things like that in football can happen and, and goals change games. So I'm hoping that we can score an early goal, settle people's nerves, like to Varane and, you know, maybe Sancho can get on the score sheet and, you know, that'd be great for him to get off the mark. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm all, I've got all the confidence in, in um, Ollie and, and picking a right team that can win that game. And I think, yeah, I'd, I'd go for 2-3-0. Um, yeah, I'm going to go 2-0 United as well. I, I fancy Mason to get on the score sheet as well. For me, I think he's going to continue that form. And I think, do I probably say Paul Pogba as well? I give. I think Paul Pogba will, will, will score a goal. Again, he's just on fire at the minute. And look, if he can keep that form up, especially when Cristiano comes in comes into the team, we really have we really have a force to be reckoned with there. And Joe, you know, I am absolutely all for it at this moment in time. But we are going to wrap up um, the podcast there for this evening, guys. Thanks very much, everyone who's been watching live and everyone who's going to watch um, live back on the on the replay. Um, do check out our website at www.talkadevils.co.uk for all the latest articles on Manchester United, um, all up to date there. So do check out our website. And if you haven't already, do smash a like on the video and hit the subscribe button down below, Phil, and also the bell notification beside him. Every time we go live, or there's a pre-recorded video up, you will get notified as soon as it's uploaded or we've gone live. So if you haven't, down below, Phil, hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification as well, and you will get all the notifications when all of our content here on Talking Devils does um, go live. And look, I know international break does give you doom and gloom. It's not the most exciting thing for football fans, but Cristiano Ronaldo has come home. I think for that, we can tolerate an international break for a fortnight or so but thanks very much everyone for watching and listening and we will be back next week thanks very much guys